Awesome news, the roll cage is officially done. Alright guys, well the last update you saw was the cage, that lower bar getting bent, and the last thing that needs to be done is to get all the seat brackets done. Our rules, the seats have to be attached in six places, two down in the seat pan and one in the shoulder area. And honestly, these things are a pain in the ass. Um, not, you would think that they'd be super easy, but I'll show you why they're tough. And I'll talk a little bit about the brackets that I do, but I'll show you how I got the, the driver's seat done. It's in there, the, the passenger seat, Navi seat's gonna go a lot faster. But this is what we're looking at. And one of the issues that I have is that these, the, the mounting points aren't perfectly square. They're, they're follow the, the curvature of the chair. So this one like right here is, it's twisted in a little bit. So when you do that, you have to compensate with the twist in the bracket or the way it's mounted to the bar, the cope. Uh, these, this one's here, you can see it's leaned out just a little bit. And then to really amplify it, when you get up here looking at the seats or the shoulders, that's a full on twist in that, in that bracket. And to get that twist, that angle, everything perfect, it's a pain in the ass. It's very time consuming to get the cope right, to get that right. But the good news is the driver's seat done. I'm gonna work on the Navi seat. My goal is to get all six of the Navi seat brackets done today. Then the cage will be ready for weld out. Let's get to going on that. I'll show you a little bit more about how I'm making those brackets. Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna show you the upper shoulder one. So I just measured from the crossbar to just shy of the seat bracket. And this one is six inches long from the inside cope to the max length. Um, I went and pre-cut a bunch of exactly inch and a half wide uh, steel for the actual mounting plate. And then I cut, I'm doing two inches of weld in there. So I cut two inches of slot um that this thing now fits nice down in here and will get welded so there's that two inches of slot and two inches of weld and now i gotta cut this to length and get the right bend on it so what i've been doing arts and crafts time right is i just get a little construction paper and slide that in there then i can bend that really easily and get the right um bend because you can see it's not just a 90, it's got to have a little bit of a twist to it too. So I can get the exact fit, get it kind of close at least. And then I'll transfer that over to the steel bar and put a bend in there with that uh, angle in it. Start trial fitting it and we'll go from there. See how this goes. Okay, hopefully this works. So this is my paper. This is a slide that goes into the tube. Here's my bend. This was just for length. So I got uh this is going to be the same this is where one vent is going to be there same piece of paper marking it down here this is obviously very scientific this is going to be my angle of the twist or the bend that i'm going to put in this piece so i'm just going to connect that now I know I need to bend that up on that line to get that angle. I'll throw it in the old uh, Harbor Freight Special. Oh, bend that thing up and off we go. Double check this makes my head hurt thinking about this stuff, but this is just a very basic angle right now that you can see in here. So I'm, I'll try to match it, get this thing in there and uh, we'll start working off of that. That might work. We'll go try it out. All right, so this is unedited. So I want you to see like the very initial fit up. So put that in there and see what kind of issues I'm working with. You can't really see, like I got part of the sink, but this thing needs to be twisted down some more. The other thing that I do is I put a spacer as I drop it. Ah, get over here. I put a spacer on here that helps kind of distribute the load over the seat. 
I put a spacer in there, so that kind of helps me establish that plane, but you know, I could just tweak this cope a little bit, but you kind of see, or I hope you can see, what I'm dealing with here. With, so when I put my cope in, so it wants to go like that. My cope didn't get that right, so it wants to go like that. So this thing needs to get twisted down. So I'm gonna go manipulate that on the old uh, vise on the bench. Okay, I'm trying to get the best angle on this thing to show you what I'm talking about and what my target was. So I think I got it. Well, I know I got it, but um, what was happening is I wasn't, this thing was twisted, so I didn't have full contact from the top side and the bottom side. So when I put this spacer in here, kind of a low distribution, see now this is perfect. Like I got it so it's tight down on the bottom. I got it so it's tight on the top. I can um, mark this and drill this out and get this thing in here. So I'm pretty happy with that. It just takes a little bit of, like I said, manipulation, but pretty happy with that. All right, well, I got my whole drill, got the final shape of the tube set up. I like to put these things in here with the spacers in there. Uh, I like to dress really quick. Somebody made the comment or asked a question about the seats. These are, they're called next level. And somebody asks, is, hey, is that, there's a, I guess a, a gaming seat. And they said, I didn't know that they made race seats. No, these are not next level gaming seats. These are made by Clint Birch of Fear Not Racing and another jet sprint guy. And um, he makes a lot of really, he, the guy is crazy good on his carbon fiber stuff. He does all kinds of fabrication. In fact, they, I've had valve covers made by him. The seats were made by him. Um, man, he just does all kinds of stuff. So go check out his uh, Facebook, I think, is where most of his stuff is. It's called Fear Not Racing, and the guy is a carbon fiber uh, master. So he spent quite a few days, nights, years developing these seats. And there's actually kind of a cool story on his on the back reason why he. I think he started with the seats, honestly. His client and his navigator, they're in a pretty bad wreck in one of his old boats. They were the old, I don't know what they were, I'll just speculate, but like the old upright Kirky racing seats. And there is nothing with, honestly to me, one of the most dangerous things that I see in this sport are those upright seats. Like you are asking for back injuries with an upright stance like that. Um, we don't wreck going all that fast. We don't hit concrete walls and concrete barriers at 150, 160 miles an hour, but we do have a lot of compression uh, impacts where we impact the bank and the boat just compresses. And if you are unlike a car, a sprint car or NASCAR, whatever, those things are kind of like sliding and they also have a lot worse, really bad frontal impact than we will ever have, honestly, because we, we have some gnarly flips, rolls, all that kind of stuff. But we never, I mean, there have been a couple times um, guys just go off straight off the track, lose their engine, and they're going whatever speed they are right into a, a tire wall or any kind of a safety barrier. So and I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it doesn't happen at 150 miles an hour. It probably happens at, by the time they get there, 40 or 50 miles an hour. And the frontal impact is not nearly as big of a threat, in my opinion, as uh, is that compression. And that's why ever since I got into the sport and um, had my very first race boat, it had those upright Kirky seats and I just kind of knew that I wanted a change. I wasn't happy with those. I wasn't even comfortable in them. It just didn't feel right to me like to be that upright and vertical. And in my opinion, like I said, that is, that is the biggest threat and one of the biggest safeties where I would like to see some sort of a mandated uh, seat recline angle. Clint broke his back. Um, he literally broke his back and he's back racing. Lucky to have him back. And he knew from his personal experiences of that happening, 
he knew that that wasn't right and he developed these seats with the recline um yeah so i'm very happy with these seats and uh, he's been improving them a little bit as the years go by but i've been happy with them they're very comfortable and in my opinion very safe now carbon fiber well carbon fiber break sure anything will break but does it do its job almost like a crumple zone like it sets your position in here you get padding so your spine takes that first impact um, and then your seat belts and everything is going to contain you like in a nascar where you're rolling 20 30 times you got stuff flinging everywhere well we got head restraints we've got wrist restraints we've got all that intact in and um so i don't know i'm totally comfortable and totally comfortable with the safety that these seats provide but no they're not a gaming seat they're from clint birch at fear not racing check them out on facebook all right guys well uh look a little different i went and got a haircut <laughs> like literally started the video with long hair uh went and got a haircut so yeah a little cut a little shorter anyway other than weld out it was uh man these things are a bear they're time consuming and i'll spin the phone around and uh show you what we got we have uh six each so two on the uppers and then four down in the seat pan so there are these little flipping brackets everywhere and you can kind of see how these angles that how it lays in the seat can be kind of a pain in the butt so got them all done i'm very happy the the, the fit it just takes time so here's a little something on the these two here are for the navy seat those two are for the driver's seat and why are those different well because the driver's seat it's actually a bigger seat i want to say it's a 15 inch seat and the navy seat's a 13 or 17 15 anyway it to get this to get them to sit in the cage about the same height and to get them the shoulders square and all that kind of stuff i had to put the driver's seat actually look cupped over that front bar and the navy seat kind of sat up on that front bar to get the, the seats more aligned because they're different size. So that's why those brackets are different. And, um, you know, you just troubleshoot, you make things up as you go. But as long as it's a good, safe design and good welds and everything, I'm totally uh, cool with this. Um, so this thing is ready to come out of the boat and throw it on the floor over here and get it welding. So here's there's the, the end product of what it's going to look like. Pretty excited to get that thing done because now everything kind of anchors off of that. The steering, uh, all the dash, the electrical panel down there. Obviously the seat's going in there. Um, we can't weld anything on here for brackets, but we can clamp stuff to it. So there's just a lot that is going to get finished because of this. This roll cage has taken me got a week or more i think probably total build time but um i knew it was going to be like that it feels really good to have it done um i on the aviation channel jolly roger aviation you might want to go check out a video over there there's a familiar face that i'm going to take flying with me and you might want to go actually two familiar faces so go check that out jolly roger aviation i'll put a link to that video in the description down below go check it out thanks for watching hope you guys have a great weekend Thanks for all the support and we'll catch you next time.